Good morning, artists, and welcome to another Art Adventures Live. My name is Mr. Andy. I'm the studio programs manager here at Jaws and Art Museum, which means I get to make art with people like you that come and visit the museum. Art Adventures is a drop-in art making experience that is free for museum members and happens every Friday morning at the museum throughout the year with our friend Miss Therese, who may be watching from home. Uh, this, and, but during this time of COVID, of course, we're all doing what we can to keep each other safe by staying at home. So I will be bring will bring Art Adventures to you each week through Facebook Live, so we can make art together from the comfort of your home. Each week, we will be inspired by a different artist or artworks from Jocelyn's galleries and create our own masterpiece while learning how these artworks are made and what makes them special. For a full list of upcoming brand new July art adventures and weekly materials, please visit jocelyn.org. If you don't have materials ready today, the recording in today's video will be posted along with a Pinterest board about our inspiration, artworks, and artists so that you can watch and make art when you have time. On this week's art adventure, we will be inspired by several artworks from Jocelyn's galleries to create a landscape painting and look closely at a starry mountain scene, this starry mountain scene, to create an illusion of distance with atmospheric perspective. A landscape is a picture of nature. The most important thing in a landscape, in a landscape painting, is the land or Mother Earth. In a, land, in a landscape painting, there are very few people, buildings, cars, or other things made by people. In this landscape, there are no people at all. There are no buildings or power lines, smokestacks or cars. Landscapes often show us a wide view of nature, not just a single flower or, a, or a one single tree, but a full frame full of plants, water, rocks, and earth full of different colors, shapes, and textures. Most landscape pictures show us lots of information about a specific place. Oftentimes, details in a landscape can appear, can appear to be near or close to us, like the rocks in this picture here, or far away, like the Grand Canyon and the distance between those trees. Some artists choose to create landscapes of a real place, like this picture of Stone City, Iowa, or special places that are important to their life, places where they live, or maybe the places they've traveled. Sometimes landscapes can make us feel small and remind us of the grandeur, grandeur and power of nature. Look at these tall trees these tall redwood trees. If you look closely, when you're at the museum, in this big, big painting, you'll see some people that look extra tiny next to these large, grand redwood trees. Sometimes, a landscape can make us feel peaceful and calm. Sometimes, a landscape can appear ominous or even dangerous. Sometimes, Artists create landscapes that are imaginary or stylized. These are landscapes we could never visit in real life. Landscapes that combine elements of real life with an artist's dreamlike imagination. Sometimes artists use their artistic skill and knowledge to create illusions within a painting to paint exactly what they see using special techniques and an understanding of color to create atmospheric perspective to make things appear far away and making their picture appear to extend for miles and miles into the distance, like this mountain landscape here. Gustave Doré, the painter of this mountain landscape from Jocelyn's Galleries, uses atmospheric techniques to create a sense of depth in this painting of the Scottish Highlands. Gustave Doré was a 19th century uh, French artist, best known for his illustrations from books like the Bible, Don Quixote, or Dante's Divine Comedy. Like many artists, he found different ways to make and sell his art, and landscape paintings like this one were especially popular with collectors in England. 
Like his dramatic woodcut illustration, Gustav often embellished his landscapes with drama, romance, or a sense of dreaminess. The mountains and lake in this landscape are painted at twilight. The next time you're at the museum and visit this picture in person, you can see the twinkling stars beginning to appear above the mountaintops as the sun slips away, casting its light, its last bit of light across the shimmering lake water. See this lake shimmering here? And overtop the trees and grass in the foreground, creating shadowy shapes and a sleepy tranquility throughout the scene. The sense of dreaminess is enhanced in this picture with atmospheric separations between the foreground, the middle ground, and the background. The foreground in a landscape are the parts of the picture that are closest to us, the viewer, often the bottom third, so this grassy Scottish moor in, the picture, in this picture here. The middle ground are all those things in the middle. The lake, that shimmering lake in these low hills. The background are all the things in the far distance, nearest the horizon line where the earth meets the sky, back here in the background. Imagine, you people at home, imagine that you're standing on top of a hill. Hold your hand out, shade your eyes, and look off to, into space. All those things that are farthest away, the things in the background, are the hardest for us to see. When you squint your eyes, you might make out the shapes and the soft edges of trees or mountaintops, but the details are hazy. This is due in part to the atmosphere, to, to the atmosphere that surrounds us, the air and all the particles of dust, water, even bugs, and everything else that's swirling through the sky can create this atmospheric haze. Gustav Doré has painted this hazy atmosphere to create an illusion of space, but also perhaps to encourage his viewer to feel a bit hazy themselves, like you're nodding off into a dream. You and I, we're going to create a hazy, dreamlike pictures of our own together today in our, in, on our, today's art adventure <clears throat> as we learn to create a landscape with foreground, middle ground, and background. We'll practice some special watercolor techniques to create atmospheric perspective. We'll use warm and cool colors to enhance our illusion of space. And then we're going to drop in some twinkling stars that will appear as our skies get dark. So we're going to make, before we make some art, let's take a look at today's supplies to be sure that we have what we need. Uh, if you need supplies, remember, if those of you that need supplies, all the supplies that you'll need to make art uh, for each July art adventure are available at the museum every Thursday in front of our atrium entrance. You can uh, pick up a supply kit like this one with a purple Joslyn logo. And inside will be everything you need to adventure with us each week, including a full list of our July art adventures in Spanish and English. But today we will need one piece. There's several pieces of paper in our supply kit. We will need one piece of all media paper to create our water, our, to create our landscape painting. We will then we'll need some paint, some watercolor paint, and a brush. We will need a black crayon and a white crayon. And then at home, each of you can find a cup of water. These are the, these are the materials we'll need for today's landscape painting. But before we begin to make some art, now, and now that we have what we need, before we begin to make our landscape painting, beginning with our black crayon, We'll, we will draw three lines, a line each to define your foreground, middle ground, and background. But before we do that, let's imagine the land that you want to paint. Sometimes artists will take their canvas, their canvas right into nature, setting up their easel in the middle of a field or beside a stream to paint exactly what they see. Other times, artists paint from a photograph. But today, you and I are going to paint from our imaginations. So close your eyes for a moment and imagine you're someplace special in nature. Close your eyes and maybe and imagine someplace um, near your home, maybe. Perhaps a big park or a countryside. Close your eyes and imagine a place that you've visited on vacation or a car ride. Maybe it's flat, like a, like a Nebraska prairie. 
Maybe it's rolling, maybe you're imagining rolling green hills of Iowa or tall mountains of Montana or Colorado. Close your eyes and uh, do you see your special space, your special place? Keep your eyes closed and use your imagination to look around that landscape. Close your eyes and look at all the things in your mind's eye that are close to you in the foreground. Wildflowers, rocks, shrubs, and trees. Take a look at these things in the foreground. Look closely at them. Look at the shapes and lines that you see in your mind's eye. And take a picture of it with your brain. And remember those things uh, uh, and open your eyes. And remember all those things that you saw in the foreground as we begin to create your, our landscapes together. Okay? So keep that special, that special place in your mind. And let's, let's, we're going to begin, we're going to begin our landscape painting by drawing three lines. We're going to use a line to define our foreground, our middle ground, and our background. We just imagine your foreground, we imagine your special, your special landscape in your mind's eye. And we are looking closely at those things that were close to us in the foreground. So we're going to draw a line. We're going to draw a line to define your foreground, all the things that are close to us. So we have to think about what kind of things did you see? You saw grass in your foreground. You might have to draw a grassy line. You saw a big bump that might be a rock. Draw a big bump or a rock. Imagine your, your foreground. Close your eyes maybe one more time. Imagine your foreground. Look at, uh, look at the things that you see. And then open your eyes and grab your black crayon and draw a line on the bottom third. Go up, one, two, three, four, and then draw a line from the left side to the right side. And I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna draw one of my own on the bottom. So you draw your own line, foreground line. And I might think of a special, maybe this is my bottom line. Maybe this is someplace near a desert where it's rocky and hot sand and maybe, oh, maybe a special kind of plant that you see in the desert that's sometimes spiky. So we have a line for our foreground. And I have two different locations. Maybe maybe this top one will be mountain-like, like Gustave Doré. And this bottom one might be someplace in the American Southwest. So this is our foreground. All the things that are closest to us. Now, close your eyes, go back to your, your, that imaginary land in your mind. Maybe it's, a, maybe it's near your home, maybe it's a vacation spot. And look off a little further in the distance, into the middle ground. Look past those things that are closest to us, and in your mind's eye, imagine those things that are in the middle. Maybe there's a lake, maybe there's train tracks or a field of plants. Imagine what that What's, what's happening in the middle ground, and then we're going to use your black crayon. And if this is similar to Gustav Doré's, maybe there's some rolling hills. So it's a different kind of line. Different kind of line for those rolling hills. Close your eyes, take a look at your middle ground. Then open your eyes and draw a line right about in the middle of your paper, a little bit above your our foreground to define your middle ground. In my American Southwest, this I'm kind of thinking, this is like where the Roadrunner runs around. So there might be some plateaus, some rocky cliffs, funky kinds, funky kinds of lines. Middle ground, foreground, things that are closest to us. Middle ground here in the middle. Now we're missing, we need a horizon, our final horizon line for the background. That's where the earth is going to meet the sky. So close your eyes again. Think about where you're back, what, what, what does your horizon line look like? On this mountain scene, it might be tall mountains, maybe like Teton mountains, jagged mountains like this, up there near the back, near the top of our picture for our background. Close your eyes, imagine where your special place is. Look off way to the distance. You might have to squint your eyes. Maybe even grab some, some imaginary binoculars. 
and look to see where the earth meets the sky and create your horizon line. I once visited a place and there was a mountain called Tea Kettle or something like that. It looked like a tea kettle. You might draw some a line that kind of creates a tea kettle shape. So now we have our foreground in the middle, or the, in the bottom, all the things that are close to us. The middle ground in the middle, all those things that are kind of far away. It'll take you a little bit to walk there. And all these things in the background. I have to hop in a, on a buggy to get back there. So now we've, we've defined our foreground, middle ground, background. Let's add some color. Let's use our watercolor paints, and we're going to practice that technique to create a hazy atmosphere, similar to that landscape painting from our galleries. That hazy, smoky, foggy-like uh, transition of color between our foreground, middle ground, and background to create atmospheric perspective, an illusion of depth, but also maybe a bit of a dreamlike quality. Before we do that, before we begin to paint though, we forgot one special thing. I want this, we're going to create, these are nightscapes. These are landscapes at night, twilight maybe, like our picture from the galleries. So we need to create some stars, and to do that we're going to use your white crayon. And we're going to use this white crayon almost like invisible ink. These stars are going to appear just like, they, just like stars appear in the sky as the sun goes down. So we're going to take our white crayon, and you won't be able to see this. It's like invisible ink, but you can do this at home. White crayon and make little stars. Maybe if you know some constellations, you can make some constellations like the... Orion's Belt. Orion's Belt or the Big Dipper. Orion's Belt's one I can, that's, I don't, I, that's one I can always pick out. I don't know very many others though. Maybe, maybe even a, a comet or a satellite flying through. All these, we're gonna make all, lots of, there's lots of stars, especially out in nature away from cities. You can, might even might be able to see the entire Milky Way. So put all kinds of stars here and there all over the place. We won't see them now, but as the sun sets in our picture, these stars are going to magically appear. We're using our waxy white crayon, our waxy white crayon to create a resist. Our watery paint will bounce right off of these lines to reveal the constellations and shooting stars that you've drawn with your white crayon. So take your time. If you want, if you can add the entire Milky Way, it might take you. I might spend more time drawing stars, but I have a, I have, a, I have plenty of stars. So let's add some. Let's add some paint. Let's create some color. Each of, if you pick up uh, materials from the museum, you'll have a, a kit of watercolors like this. I'm going to use my larger watercolors so that we can paint. Like since I have larger paint, larger paper, and so that you can, these colors will be bright and bold. So let's start. I'm going to paint both of these, uh, and you can watch, and then follow along. It's always good to watch, and then follow, um, and then after you watch me demonstrate, then you can practice for yourself. We're, we want to create an atmospheric perspective. We're going to paint, carefully, we're going to paint with our color to create a gradient. So our color is going to be darkest at, at the top, and then it will uh, gradually get become more light in value. We'll do the same thing in our middle ground. We'll have a gradient. It'll be darkest value at the top edge of our middle ground, and then get lighter towards our foreground. Our foreground will be darkest at the top and then get lighter towards the bottom. So we're going to create a gradient for each of our background, our middle ground, and our foreground. I'll show you how. So watch, watch me for some tips and you can practice it yourself. 
I'm going to begin, and you can decide. You, you can decide which colors you want to use, but uh, I'm going to begin with some cool colors. And I'm going to start from the background and work my way to the, for, to the front, the foreground. Cool colors are the colors on, those color, on the color wheel, or in my tray, that appear cool. Like this cool blue, like a, like a tip in the cool blue, blue pool. This cool gray, uh, violet color, even like a shady green tree. I'm going to start with my cool colors, and I might I'm going to, might start with a lot of blue. So in my cup of water, take your cup, dip your brush in your cup of water. Maybe scrape the hairdo off that cup, or scrape the bristles on the edge of your cup to get rid of some of that water, and, then, and take your brush and those bristles and gently make little brush strokes over and over and over again, flipping your brush from one side to the other to load up with lots of paint. Smooth brush stroke, kind of like you're petting that paint. And eventually your bristles, your hairdo is going to turn blue. That means we have lots of paint on my brush. And I'm going to, I'm going to begin with, all, with lots of blue paint on my brush. I'm going to begin by painting the very top. Almost just like a line over the top. I can see some of my stars starting to appear. Now when we're young artists, when we're new artists, if you have younger brothers or sisters, sometimes this is how... Our new artists paint the sky. So when you look up at the sky outside, sometimes it does it does appear darkest at the top of our atmosphere. But we know that that blue extends all the way down to the bottom. So we're going to uh, we're gonna we're gonna pull it down. Before we do that, though, let's add a second color. We want this to appear. We want this to appear like twilight, like the sunset. And sunset, there's lots of colors. So I'm gonna rinse my brush put my brush in the cup of water and squish it around a little bit, scrape the hairdo to, to remove some of that extra water. And let's introduce some violet. Or you can choose a color. Think about the colors that you see in the sky as the sun sets. Now I'm gonna take some violet or some purple and paint right on top of that blue, just like that. This morning we've got a couple clips. Now, we said that our, our, our new artists, Beginning artists, young artists, sometimes would stop here. We want to create a gradient, though, and we're going. So we're going to drag that color from the top all the way down to the horizon line. We look out at the sky. That sky is the darkest at the top of our atmosphere, and as it gets near the horizon line, it becomes uh, more clear or a lighter value. So instead of loading up with paint, I'm going to rinse my brush in my cup of water, scrape off some of that, that extra water, and with just a clean brush, no water on our brush, let's drag that color down. I'm going to kind of scrub and pull that color from the top down towards my horizon line. I'm kind of I'm doing some kind of circle scrubby brush strokes. If I run out of water, I have a big piece of paper. Pull that blue-violet that we mixed at the top of our sky down towards the mountains. I can see my stars start to appear. Now, I've started to create my gradient, and if I decide I want to make, if I want to add more blue, I can come in and add some more blue towards up here at the top. I want to add more violet. Add more violet, but we want to keep our darkest, keep those dark color, the dark, that dark value towards the top. And our lightest value should be right here where the mountains meet the sky. Create our gradient. You dig? So this is how that we're going to do this. We're going to do that similar. We're going to create that similar effect for each section of our painting. Next, I'm going to I might do I'm going to do, do go for our mountain. So go ahead, paint your sky. I think I might quickly do a sky down here, and I might do some different colors on my desert scene. I might start with violet this time. Load it up with lots of violet. Maybe 
add a bit of red. This is a hot, maybe hot Sedona sky down in Arizona. And then, clean brush. Let me choose to blend two colors. And then with the clean wet brush, I'm gonna drag that color down. Down, smooth brush strokes, down towards my horizon line. Horizon line, that's where that earth meets the sky. And this down here in the Arizona desert, with some rocky horizon line. Next, let's do those that the background. Up here on the top picture, I'm gonna use some more cool colors. I think I'm going to start with, I think I'll start with blue again. A little bit of blue. And just like I did in the sky, I'm gonna maybe just make one quick brush stroke, a stripe of blue. Then I'm gonna rinse. And this time I might add some green. Last time in my sky I used violet and blue. This time I might add some green. Create a bit of a separation, a bit of contrast between my sky and my mountain ridge. And just like before, you can blend those with a wet brush, blend those and drag it towards our middle ground. So from our background, we'll drag it down towards our middle ground. I have big paper. I have big paper, so I'm painting extra fast. You take your time with smooth brush strokes. So I'm painting extra fast on my big paper so you can see and we can practice together. You dig? Let's try one down here. This time, I think down here in my warm, this Sedona desert scene, I might use some orange. I might start with orange. Orange, but it's nighttime, so let's add it. I'm gonna take a bit of purple, maybe. Violet and put that on top of my orange as the shadows start to fall over these mountains in the distance and drag it down. Clean brush. Experiment with your color mixing, add two colors and then use a clean brush and drag it down to your next, the next part of your landscape from our background to our middle ground. And we'll save our foreground for the very end. So my middle ground, I'm gonna come back to my cool mountain scene in Montana maybe, or Wyoming, Idaho, Canada. And I'm going to this time, last time I started with blue, this time I think I'll start with green. Load up with lots of green. Last time I loaded up with lots of blue, this time I might start with lots and lots of green. Just like before. Quick stripe. And this time I'll use just a little bit of blue. So last time I had a bit of a blue green, this time we have a bit of a green blue. We have blue green. We have a bit more of a green blue. We have more green. That's not right. But, uh, it is for today. It is for today. Okay. Primary colors comes first. Blue green. I'm blanking. Stretch it out. So we have saturated color or more opaque color towards the top of each of our foreground, middle ground, and background. And we're going to use that water to stretch it out to make that that color a bit more transparent to create a gradient from light to dark. Light values to our darkest value. Down here, in the middle, this time I might start with a cool color. I'm going to start with that purple in our middle ground. My purple is kind of a warm purple, almost like a pink or magenta. And let's cool that down a bit further. Our cool colors tend to recede. We talked about how 
a landscape artist can use their skills of perspective, but also their understanding of color. And our cool colors, those blue, violet, and green, make things kind of fall away into the, into the background, the distance. And our warm colors, which we'll experiment with in just a moment when we do our foreground up top, will come forward. They'll make things appear closer to us. So those warm colors are especially good for foregrounds, things that are close to us. Let's stretch that, let's stretch this out. I am painting fast and loose and kind of sloppy so that you can see. Take your time. When you're painting at home, take your time, especially practice one or two maybe. If you have paper to practice on. And once you've figured it out, take your time. Paint with smooth brush strokes or practice brush strokes that describe the texture of all those natural things like rocks or cacti. All right, now our foreground. We did our background. In the background uh, with our blue and blue-violet, our foreground, our middle ground with our blue-green. Now we're going to do our, our, our foreground, the things that are closest to us. And we said that our warm colors, I, we mentioned, I mentioned that our warm colors will come forward, protrude perhaps, will create an illusion that these are moving forward. So I'm going to load up with lots of yellow before I begin to paint my, a little bit lots of yellow. But just like before, I'm going to paint in all of these, even that rock shape. I'm going to paint it, right now we're painting all in with just one color. I might even bring that yellow down a bit, especially here in the, in the middle, middle. This might be where the sun is reflecting out across this flat. part here where a glacier maybe came through and flattened everything out. Now, warm yellow, let's, let's cool it down a bit. Let's grab some of that cool green. And let's paint with that cool green right on top of that yellow to make a yellow green. Like a light green, kind of yellow green. My big brush, my big brush, I'm going to go big brush strokes. Right on top of all the yellow. And then, just like we did before, grab a, clean your brush. And with just water on your brush, you can pull that out towards the edges. And we'll create kind of a, we'll kind of create that foggy out, 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 out atmosphere out here towards the edges, the peripheral. Where things we are in less focus on the edges. Think about when you look around, what your eye sees, something like that. I'm gonna do one more. I'll do it down here on the bottom. We'll do another, our foreground on the bottom down here. I'll do the same thing. I think I want that foreground to be extra warm. So I'm gonna load up with lots of yellow. I'll leave that cactus out. Oh, no, no, we'll do the cactus too. Why not? Some crazy cacti. And for that one, let's maybe do a bit of red. Like that too. That painting, now that we're painting more, now we're getting the hang of it, I can paint more quickly. And when I paint with my wet red on top of that wet yellow, Creates this a wash of color, and those colors will blend nicely. And I'm going to do one last time. We're going to rinse and stretch. Create our, gra our gradient. And I might, this for kicks, right? Cacti is green. Now, this is a nice, these are nice dreamlike landscapes. We could stop right here, or once you've painted in your foreground, middle ground, and background, and you allow your paint that paint to dry, we could come in and 
draw in some more of those details if this is that, that rocky rock or maybe some other big plants or wildflowers. And paint, we could add, we could add paint right on top of uh, what we've already painted to add some more details. I hope that uh, you'll, sh you'll share your landscapes and if you choose to create some details, we'll take a photo of that landscape and share it on our Facebook page so that we can see your special place, the special place that you chose to paint and maybe even give it a title or let us know where that landscape is. Thanks for making art with me today. Don't forget to share those pictures. We love to see the art that you create on each week's art adventure. You can post those pictures to the event page uh, for today's art adventure on Facebook and follow us for all updates about all of Jocelyn's art from afar experiences, including art camps that are happening right now. Stay posted for our future virtual uh, engagement and I'll see you again next week for another art adventure. Thanks for making art with me, artists. Adios.